So we're in the midst of a huge data growth by tidal wave, and again, this is not shocking news to anybody, anybody in this room. Um, some of the biggest drivers for uplink and downlink for, for the uh, for, for the downlink is streaming video. Uh, that, that, that is the biggest driver for, for traffic. For the uplink, it's just peer to peer. Um, coming back to the downlink, I think when I was here last year, I, I reported that our streaming video accounts for 30% of our downlink traffic. Well, this year it's high. And if you take a closer look at what's actually, what sort of video are our customers streaming, um, Netflix. Uh, basically, over-the-top type video, Netflix is growing, um, you know, by leaps and bounds every month. Uh, to the point that Netflix now accounts for half of our streaming video traffic. If you, if you just imagine, you know, less than 18 months ago, uh, Netflix doesn't even exist as a service for, for, for online streaming. Uh, flash video used to be number one, uh, but uh, no longer the case. Uh, that this is driving a lot of usage. This is also uh, driving a lot of concern with, with a, a lot of the wireless carriers because of the amount of tonnage that, that this is going to be, to be, to be driving as a network. Um, and, and that brings us to, uh, you know, if you want to be able to sustain a business case to actually support the you know, high, over-the-top video streaming type of business and, and streaming content, uh, you need to have a lot of spectrum. Uh, Clearwire uh, has more spectrum than anybody else in, 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 in the U.S. One of the reasons that AT&T said they, they uh, you know, wanted to buy T-Mobile was because they wanted to consolidate T-Mobile spectrum with us. Further validates the point that we have been trying to make, that for, for a sustainable, long-term 4G business, you have to have a lot of spectrum. And not only do you need to have a lot of spectrum, but you have to have them available as large contiguous blocks. And that is the way you can actually process a lot of bandwidth. In, in, in Fairwise case, there's also another big advantage why our spectrum debt is going to help. As we look at beyond uh, WiMAX 802.16e, which is what I have to do for my company, um, having a lot of spectrum helps because we can look at adding uh, to our WiMAX offering um, other technologies as an overlay. So, so we have a deployed base of cell sites all over the United States. And we are looking at adding the next uh, technology to enhance our, our offering to our customer. And with enough spectrum, I can actually bring in an overlay over the existing WiMAX network. Obviously, having the right platform helps as well to, 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 uh, to, to push for a very high degree of reuse at a cell site. In, in terms of uh, evolving from, from uh, WiMAX 802.16e, there's certainly a lot of path to do that. Um, there is the uh, 802.16m. Uh, evolution, and, and um, I, I don't want to steal Dr. Watanabe's uh, thunder. Uh, he is probably going to talk to you a lot about uh, his experience with uh, the 16M. Um, obviously, there is the uh, LTE path as well. And, and one of the reasons why Clearwire is looking at, at LTE uh, as a possible migration path is, is, this, is the sheer size of the uh, ecosystem. We, we believe that the, the ecosystem uh, could be sizable uh, with, with, uh, with LTE, uh, in particular uh, with the spectrum band that we have. Uh, and here's why. Um, we believe that the 2.3 and 2.7 to the 2.7 gigahertz ecosystem is, is a strong global band for 4G. Um, the the 2.5 gigahertz band is adopted globally. Uh, in, in, in all over the world, in the United States, in Peru, in Latin America, in uh, uh, Colombia, Norway, Finland, Denmark, and, and in Asia. Um, there are major operators that are acquiring 2.5 gigahertz spectrum. China Mobile has just announced a, a large-scale crowd of six, uh, six or seven cities. Uh, Vodafone is acquiring 2.5 uh, spectrum. And, and also the chipset vendors now are, are taking the, uh, the 2.3 to 2.7 um, chipset uh, uh, a lot more seriously, especially with the progress that we're seeing in India and in China, especially. Um, if you look at the uh, histogram there, uh, if you look at the LTE formats supported in this uh, in this particular band, which is band class 7, 38, 41, and band class 40, uh, in terms of the amount of spectrum invested and the population covered, it do they dominate. Which gives you an inkling that uh, you know, 
about the potential size of the ecosystem and the potential cost, the low cost that, that we can collectively leverage. We need to push for a global 2T to 2.7 4G chipset that, that uh, the device manufacturers are comfortable uh, embedding into, into various devices. One of the challenges they have as device manufacturers is that there's just, there's just too many frequencies. There's, there's an alphabet soup out there of all the different frequencies trying to squeeze into the same handset. And, and, you, and, and if you can push for the closest thing to a GSM world band for 4G will be the 2.3 to 2.7 uh, ecosystem. And that is one of the things that Clearwire is, is, is definitely interested in the industry, is to help push for, for a much larger ecosystem that drives much lower costs uh, for, for our devices and ultimately for our customers. 